everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Me and my boyfriend are moving house, so I've had to pull out all of my plays anyway. So today, just as a bit of fun, I'm going to go through every playtext I own. Some of them will have some stories, they'll stay in the video, some of them won't. And then I'll cut them, and then I'm going to put them all in a box, and then that's a load of packing done! Multitasking, two birds with one stone. Let's get into it! It is. There's so many of these plays that I haven't actually got around to reading. That's why, if you saw my video last month, you'll know one of my resolutions is to read a play a month. Part of it is I have so many play texts that I buy and I just haven't got around to reading them. What are we starting off here with? We've got uh, Sophocles, Antigone. Uh, I've read this one actually. Antov Chekhov, five plays. Three Sisters is on at the Nash at the moment. I kind of want to see if I can try and see it, but I have no idea what the dates are because I'm terrible at booking tickets. A disappearing number, oh my gosh. I feckin' love this play. If you've seen my video about shows that have shaped me, this is definitely on it. Let's grab some more. Oh. Boys by Ella Hickson. I saw this play twice. It was on at the Nuffield Theatre when I was still living in Southampton. Eight, also by Ella Hickson. One of the ones I haven't got round to reading yet. Tom Suppard, Arcadia, have read this. DNA by Dennis Kelly. Ibsen's A Doll's House, classic. Once a Catholic, Tom Somali. These are plays that I was involved with when I was at school. Let's start with this one. So this is hard to swallow. I did it as my uh, GCSE drama performance and then re-bought it when I was going through some stuff at university. Probably not going to be one of the ones I reread this year. Look Back in Anchor by John Osborne. Our Country's Good by Timberlake Worth and Baker. Love this play. I think, not because I need to, I haven't read it yet, but I think I might just reread this for the funsies. New Rising Pile. So this is where I have a problem and why I, there are so many plays that I don't read. A lot of the times, particularly if it's a new writing play or something like that, I'll, I'll go see a play, not me to buy the playtext, but then I'll love it and I'll be like, oh my gosh, I need to buy the playtext. And then I buy the playtext and then life happens and I don't reread it like I, like I mean to. So all of these are plays that I've bought straight after seeing the actual play. So firstly, Leia and Co. I have done a monologue from this, like monologue city, if you're looking for a female monologue. Half Breed by uh, Natasha Marshall. First show I've seen particularly about the mixed race experience, so it really spoke to me as a mixed race woman. But Acceptance uh, saw this at the Hampstead. Blue Orange by Joe Penhall. Amelia, yes, Amelia. Yeah, I saw this play and immediately was like, I'm buying the play text. <laughs> Definitely need it. Oh, my tickets are in here. Oh good, they're for this tax year, it's fine. <laughs> Buy this play, I hope that they put it on again. If they do put it on again, see this play. If you can't see this play, buy and read this play. Bothlet by Newt Barnes, that was about the Hillsborough disaster. One man play, so if you're a dude. Miss Littlewood, my singing teacher wrote this. <laughs> Shout out to Sam Kenyon about Joan Littlewood, amazing woman of theatre. Let me know if you want me to do a video about badass women in theatre, let me know in the comments and I will do a video on that because Joan would definitely be on that list. Misty, again, saw the play, loved the play, bought the play text. This is great. And um, Arinze Kene, Young Men, definitely a play for you. It deals with, you know, what is a black play in inverted commas. Chewing Gum Dreams by Michaela Cole. If you know the series Chewing Gum, this is the one woman show that she wrote that that is kind of, it's not so much based on as like elaborated on that kind of world, I think was the vibe I got. A couple more shows I was in. So The Trojan Women and Other Plays by Euripides. That was our second term project when I was at RAM and I played Cassandra. The Crucible by Arthur Miller. I did this the last year I was living in Southampton before I moved to London to train, I played uh, Susan Walcott, I think her surname is. I oh, just one, one of the possessed kids. <laughs> Got to be possessed by the devil. It's all good. Shakespeare, let's do the Shakespeare pile. So much Shakespeare. Oh. Two seconds. There's a lot. I have the Penguin editions for all of them. My boyfriend Josh doesn't like that because apparently the Arden is the best one. So what have we got? We got Much Ado About Nothing, Cymbeline, Romeo and Juliet. I was in this in the summer. I never used to like this play. I used to always get so annoyed. Like, why does she not just run away with him when he gets banished to Mantua? Why doesn't she do this? Why doesn't she do that? If you read the text and 
do it like I had to do. Like Juliet has a lot of agency. She instigates a lot of the action. She is so gutsy. It's just she's been closeted her whole life, so she hasn't been able to or had a reason to use that fire within her. I think she's great. Juliet's a great character. Romeo's all right too. Miss Summer Night's Dream, Measure for Measure, Macbeth, Scottish play, standard. When we did monologues in our final term at Ram, I did Lady Macbeth. That was fun. And last penguin version, Hamlet. The one non-penguin I have is Othello. So again, at school, we went to see Frantic Assembly's production. It was set in Yorkshire in a pub. It was great. I, I really enjoyed it, hence why I bought it. Princess Caribou, Moon on a Rainbow Shore, Black Comedy, A Streetcar Named Desire. I studied this in English when I was at school. I remember we were watching the, the movie. I went to an all-girls school. So Marlon Brando was in the famous black and white film. And I just remember Marlon Brando walks on and we're all like, we're like 15. So <laughs> Marlon Brando walks on, wide chest, arm muscles, looking gorgeous. And we're like, oh my God. And he just goes, hey Stella. And we're like, no, don't open your mouth. You're so beautiful. Just don't open your mouth because your voice is awful in this film. Every man went to see this at the National. This should have been in the new writing one. But um, anyway, it was adapted by Caroline Duffy. Stage Beauty. So there was a film of Stage Beauty. And then I didn't realize it was a play. It was about Kiniston, who was an actor. And he was a famous actor who was known for playing women's roles. And then obviously you had the interregnum where we killed King Charles I and we had a republic and theatre was banned. But then when King Charles II came back with the restoration, he was like, yeah, girls can be on stage. Why not? And so Kinnison was really annoyed by this because that was basically his livelihood was playing women. And then there were all these women who were coming in stealing our jobs but yeah i i knew it as a film first didn't realize it was a play jack thorne when you kill me i bought this because i heard it was good for monologues reasons to be pretty flower girls oh <sighs> last batch just got these and then we're done unless I, unless you want to see what my vocal selections are like i might get my vocal selections why not so we've got speechless by linda brogan and polly teal this is really interesting i think if i remember right yeah the true life drama of two girls struggle to find a voice. It's basically these twins who were mute. Like they weren't born mute or anything like that. They just decided not to speak and apparently did some really messed up things. This has a lot of scribbles in it. Pests. Pygmalion by Bernard Shaw. Uh, love this play. When I was at Ram, someone was like, you should play Eliza Doolittle. So like, if anyone's doing Pygmalion or My Fair Lady, which is based on Pygmalion, Eliza Doolittle. Come on, there were black people in Victorian England. Hit me up. The Libertine by Stephen Jeffries. Sarah Kane. I think I bought this at a time where I was like, I should read more plays. I know who Sarah Kane is, so I'll just get a collection of her work. So that's nearly half, no, time six. So I've got half the year here if I do a play a month. God, it's gonna take me ages. Top Girls by Carol Churchill. War Horse, Spring Awakening. This is the play that the musical is based on. So this came first. This is way more heavy than the musical. The musical this is kind of like, ah, oh, no, this is cool. This is a little bit of teenage suicide. Like, no. Blood, Sweat and Tears. And last but not least, we have Mary Shelley by Helen Edmondson. I don't know if I've read this or not. I'm gonna, I'm gonna assume I haven't read it yet. Oh, I should have counted how many I have. I know, let's put them, let's throw them into the box and see how many I have. Right. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, I'm just not counting off this, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, eighteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, twenty, twenty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-seven, And that's not even counting the fact that some of those are collections, so they're more than one play. That's not counting the complete works of Shakespeare, which is at my mum's house, which is like massive, hence why it's still at my mum's house, and uh, monologue books as well. Let's do vocal selections as well, because they're here. They also need to go in a box, so this is not all of the music books that I own. Uh, these are specific vocal collections for specific shows because, again, we don't want to be here all day. So first up, we've got A Man of No Importance by Irons and Flaherty. I love them. They're my favourite composers. Les Mis, 
Are you a musical theatre nerd without the lamest vocal selections? Castle on a Cloud, I dreamed a dream. At the end of the day, it's all in here. Wicked, this was like my angsty teen musical. Like, I'm not that girl. All the teenage angst. Wild Party, specifically the Andrew Lipper version. Title of shows, this is a very niche musical about two guys writing a show about writing a show. Last five years, no one will ever be able to play this piano part, apart from the chosen few, but you know, we love it. The songs are very long. Ten minutes of na 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 oh shmoo, you get to be happy, which is a banger, but it's very long. Hamilton, obviously. This is a beast of a vocal slip. Like, let's just compare that to Lame is. So like, this is how thick Lame is. is. This is how thick Hamilton is. I mean, and they're both basically sung through. Lame is just doesn't want you to have it. Lame is is like, no. Will I be able to see it live? Who knows? Ask me when I've sold my kidneys. And last but not least, Ragtime. This is my favorite musical in life. How many vocal selections? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. A way more manageable number, in my opinion. 50 play texts, or play books at least, and eight vocal selections. I think I have a problem. <laughs> so, those are all of the play texts and all of the vocal selections that I own, that I now have to put in a box and take to a new location. What is your favorite play text or favorite vocal selection that you own? Let me know in the comments. Like this video if you enjoyed it, and I will see you all in my next video. Bye, friends.